If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25. Uh, Isaiah 25, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Uh, while you're turning there, as always, I ask for your prayers that I would, uh, I would uh, be able to preach uh, what the Lord would have. Isaiah 25, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. The Bible says, O Lord, Thou art God, I will exalt Thee. I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city a heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. I shall never, it shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nation shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, shadow from the heat, and from the blast of the terrible ones, it is as a storm against the wall. I'd like to preach this morning, the Lord being my helper, the storm is coming. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you uh, for this book. God, that you bound it together for English-speaking people, and let, Lord, that we might honor it under the day when it's an attack, when everybody wants to hear something beside the uh, King James Bible. Lord, we pray this morning that you would bless your word, that you'd stir us up together as a people, and, Lord, that you'd cause us to love you more. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, some somewhat familiar verses of Scripture, although in my copy of the text, I don't have, or anybody's preached it at least that I heard in the last 12 years, uh, because uh, I marked my Bible. I may have preached it to you, I don't know, I don't mark my Bible that way, so y'all might be getting another dose of the same medicine, uh, but it'll do you good. Uh, but in this, Isaiah predicts protection from the storm, but he also lets us know that the storm is coming. Now, uh, man's, man's thoughts always is that we want to understand the weather. The one thing that we really have no control over whatsoever, that's what we want to know about. And, you know, uh, even the Old Testament writing said when the sky is red and lowering, there'll be rain the next day. And uh, even then, they were wanting to understand what the weather was going to do. But this is the reality. We really don't know what the weather was going to do. Years ago, and we have all the little houses on the prairie, whether it be good or bad, we have all episodes and all books. And I don't know if you remember this one, but there was a, a, an episode where uh, somebody a little out further west than Walnut Grove was typing a message on a uh, telegraph saying the storm is coming. It was a huge blizzard on its way. And the little Ingalls girls, as always, was trapped out in it. And uh, Paul was looking for where they were at. But they had the warning, but no one heard it. Now, this is the thing with telegraph. If you don't see it clicking, you miss your message. Now, you can hear the tap, 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 but you have to be there to hear it. It predicts what's coming. And I really think in the modern day, they don't do any more than that. They call to Paris and say, hey, what's going on in Paris? And then they tell us, and not Paris, France, Paris, Tennessee, and say, what's going on over there? And then they tell Dover in 20 minutes, you know, and then they become the predictor. But really, we just never know, do we? Now, 
The storm assuredly is coming, but this is the thing, the uncomfortable part of it. Yeah. We don't know when it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, storms can come in a lot of ways. We just suffered that here in our county, and Montgomery County got the, got the short end of the stick on this one. And I understand from what, I, what I've seen on Facebook, and you can always depend on Facebook, right? And, uh, but what I have seen is there was very little warning. Yeah. It was there, and it was done. And I saw, you know, uh, I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but uh, I saw people literally driving toward their st the storm with their phone up like this, and I, I just shook my head. You know, when the storm is coming, we need to take shelter. That, 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 I mean, that's not rocket science. That's not, uh, that's not just what intelligent people do. If someone tells you the storm is coming, take shelter. Now, again, the problem with the storm we're speaking of, we have little or no warning. We can see little things coming and, and, and little hints but when the big storm comes, even though we'd love to know the day and the hour, the truth is, we don't. We, we stand in ignorance of that. You know what? The Lord God in His mighty wisdom is not going to tell us everything. Uh, you know what? It's not even for us to know everything. We, we, you know what? When you stand in ignorance, that's where faith begins. As long as you can see it and hear it and feel it, they'll go, oh, yeah, this is great. But what about when you can't? That's where faith begins. It, it begins when you don't know. So the writer begins Isaiah, uh, and if you read the book, the writer on the counsel of Isaiah, and it was a predictatory book saying, judgment is coming. That was the big message. And Isaiah was a good man. We see his wonderful experience with God in chapter 6. But you know, Isaiah still simply told it how it was. Now the next one that predicts the very same event, Jeremiah, was called the weeping prophet. And after the captivity, after Israel did fall and he told them it was going to fall, he wrote the Lamentations of Jeremiah and he weeped with God's people. Isaiah wasn't exactly like that. He simply said, the storm is coming. And he told them how big the storm was going to be. He said, hey, there's not going to be anything left. And you know what? The people didn't listen to him. The people over at Clarksville was driving toward the storm. And you say, well, that's dumb. Without the goodness of God, we do the same thing. We drive toward the storm. And, and, and so we find that as Isaiah is beginning this section of the book, he says, O oh Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Now notice he didn't make any commitment for Israel. He made a personal commitment that I'm going to praise you. You know what? I can't even make a commitment for Donna that we're going to pray. I hope we pray communally together as man and wife, but I can't guarantee Donna's going to join in. You see what I'm saying? I, I can't say for Donna because the only person I can say for is Larry. And so I believe Isaiah understood the same thing, and he said, I, I will praise thee. He was going to praise thee in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's hard to do. No. You ever been disconnected in the time of storm from your family? It's a horrible, horrible feeling. You all know the last storms. Two years ago, I was in Florida when that happened too. Now, all I can say is God delivered me. And... Uh, but see, what was, what was difficult, I was 800 miles away, and I couldn't reach my family, none of them. And that was a very scary time. 
And so we see that he answered for himself, I'm going to praise you. It is my determination to lift you up. O oh Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. How do you praise the name of God? Uh, you know, this is the sad part. Uh, Jehovah God, Jehovah Jireh, the God that we serve through the person of Christ, most people in the average uh, Baptist church don't even know that his that's his name. That's sad, isn't it? You know, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses is about to take that name from us. Now, it's, it doesn't belong to them. It belongs to us. And this is what, this is praising his name. It's not just saying, Jehovah's his name, praise the Lord. It's when difficulty arises. God's in control. When the clouds are getting black, God is good. That's praise. Uh, and you, uh, you, you don't see enough of that among God's people. They start wringing their hands and wondering what is next. But Isaiah made a determination, a personal determination. I'm going to praise the Lord. Why? For thou hast done wonderful things. Now, look, uh, make note, done is a past tense. We got our school teacher in, that, in, in, in tow now, and, and she can correct us. But done is a past tense. Not, you know what that means? It means he learned by experience things that happened before. Think about your own life. Not just the Word of God. The Word of God is the full counsel. But my Lord has done wonderful things in my life. You know what? I've never gone hungry. I hadn't always had what I wanted, but I've never gone hungry. When you get outside the United States, you'll find what a, what, what a blessing that is. That's why I tell you, everybody needs to leave the States at least one time and find out how good we got it. I've had some health problems, but I'm still kicking. I don't, I don't kick as high as I did when I was 25, but at 55, I'm still here. Can we praise the Lord for that? His experience taught him he could praise. The storm was coming. He said, you know what? I'm not going to look at the clouds. I'm going to praise the Lord. And there's a, that, that's a very rare man. And, and listen, he, he had been impressed with God. He knew the nation was going to fall, and yet and still he chose to praise God. Uh, that, that, that's a remarkable thing to me that he, full knew, he knew full well the extent of the storm. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. And that's just why uh, uh, I, was, I was preaching the counsels of old. His experience taught him two things. You know what? God is faithful. Faithfulness and truth. If God says it, it will come to pass. Now, He's truthful. Now, every one of us, if we'd be honest, have lied, right? God's never, ever told us a lie. Jesus was ascending and he said, in like manner, so shall I come again. Man, that's true, isn't it? I'm going to see that someday. It's true. So all through his life, reading the reading of the books that existed at that time, which I, I'm pretty sure was the Mosaic books, and that was pretty much it, he found in that writing that his God was faithful. And not only that, he told you the truth. Ever hear the old saying, the truth hurts? A lot of truth in that, ain't it? Sometimes the truth ain't, uh, doesn't sound so good, but it is still what we need. Verse 2, for thou hast made a city a heap. Now, woo! I'm going to tear down Jerusalem.
Jerusalem. I'm going to destroy it. There's nothing going to be left of it. That was a truth. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but that was the truth. Kind of hard, ain't it? Years ago, Don and I and the boys lived in Dresden. And I went down there when I still worked at the veterans' home to look at a patient that was potentially coming to the veterans' home. Dresden doesn't even look like the same town. There was a horrible, horrible tornado the one, two years ago when it came here. And y'all got out good compared to Dresden. Literally, there was nothing left of the courthouse. Old time town, big uh, uh, square ring around the court. Beautiful town. I loved it when we lived down there. Nothing, nothing left. The storm was coming, you see. I often wonder, and I, uh, I don't know a lot of people that live down in West Tennessee. Uh, I've lost contact with most of them over the years. But you know what? I wonder how much warning did they have? What was amazing to me, unlike here in Stewart County and Montgomery County, and, and you'd have to see the town uh, to, to, to see it, to believe it, not one person died. You know why? Because God didn't want them to die. Another thing I thought was amazing, in the cornerstone of the old Methodist church, and there wasn't nothing left of that building. Huge. Looked like a cathedral when we lived down there. Ripped open the cornerstone of the church, and there was a Bible in the cornerstone of the church. And you know what? It was still there. Is there anything too hard for our God? Literally nothing left of the building, but the Word of God still put. The storm is coming. The storm is coming. And, and so we see uh, that despite what was going to occur unconditionally, we find that Isaiah was still focused on God. Thou hast made a city a heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers. And we know this to be true, that the city was going to be occupied uh, by the enemy, by, uh, uh, and they were strange, they were not, they did not know God, they did not love God, they did not, they did, they did not worship God, they were strangers to the place, and yet and still, they were going to occupy the land. I mean, look what we got today in the United States. We have a bunch of crazies running our country. You know what? <laughs> the storm is coming. People that really don't even know what this country stands for is in the driving seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Worship the Lord. The storm's coming. Uh, I, I, I will give you that with full assurance. But you know what your position is? To worship the Lord. Yes. Don't look at the black clouds. Don't listen to the thunder. Just simply worship the Lord. Because see, what the devil, because you know what you remember? Uh, remember when, um, uh, when they came back to rebuild the city, Ezra and Nehemiah, and, and how the people were still running scared and hiding? Don't be that person. I give you a fair warning. Don't run and hide. Worship the Lord. I remember back in COVID when we made the decision we were not going to stop meeting. Eric and I were talking, and maybe we was talking about uh, how the government is going to try to control us through our tax number. And uh, I said, they'll take our building. And Eric said, I'll burn it first. And you know what? I said, I'll help you. See what I'm saying? 
celebrate. The time's coming. Do you have a storm plan? Worship the Lord. Give him praise. Give him honor. The storm is coming. And so we find that was Isaiah's plan. Verse 3. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. Now, if you underline in the Bible, underline that statement, that portion of the verse, the strong shall glorify thee. Now, if that be true, and it is, it's in the word of the God, what about weak? We can only conclude that the weak won't, right? That they won't be given in glory, that only the strong will. How do you get strong? How do you get ready? for this storm that's definitely coming. Get in that book. And if you hear sound preaching going on in Elkton, I felt very bad I couldn't go to Elkton Friday night. Go. See what I'm saying? If it's in Camden, go. Because that's what's going to make you strong, Right? That's, what, that's what's going to help you as we approach the storm. And, and so we, we find Isaiah here that he makes a determination uh, that strong people are going to keep glorifying God even in the storm. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. Now, how are they going to, the terrible, the terrific, you know, we, we, we interpret that terrible uh, really probably most of the time in the wrong way in the King James Bible because you hear uh, someone getting hit by a car and you're like, oh, that's terrible. But the root word for terrible is terrific, right? So if somebody gets hit by a car, guess what? It's not terrific, <laughs> It's not a good thing. Terrible means praiseworthy. Terrible means strong. Terrible means victory. Terrible, it, it, it means full uh, of glory, full of strength. So with that thought, read it with me. Again, therefore shall the strong people glory, uh, excuse me, therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, the, the terrible, the strong, the uh, huge nations shall fear thee. Are they better? Are they stronger militarily than Israel? Yes. But who are they going to fear? They're going to fear God. Right? They're going to fear, fear. You know, it seems like we live in a day and age that the only aspect of God that we can love is his love, right? is his goodness. Do you love him for his judgment? Do you, do you love him how he, he has everything after the counsel of his own will? Do you love him when sin is judged? You got to love him, right? Uh, uh, I kind of love Donna no matter what. Now, sometimes it gets a little weird. But I still do it. You see what I'm saying? That's how we have to love God. When nations are judged, you know what? Love God. Remember when uh, Louisiana was slammed by Hurricane Katrina? Horrific. You know what was going on that week? A sodomite festival. I, I figured it was just the judgment of God, didn't you? Hated that other people had to go down with them. But that is what it is, right? Sometimes it's very hard to rejoice in the judgment of God, but we ought to do that. We ought to be able to give Him praise and glory and honor, no matter the situation. Verse 4, For thou hast been a strength to the poor. Now that is, you know, we immediately think about economics, but it doesn't mean that. It means the sick. Now, old people, I remember my great-grandmother doing this. They are like, Granny, how you feeling? Well, I'm feeling poorly. That didn't mean she was broke. 
I mean, she didn't feel good. She didn't feel strong. She didn't feel rich in the strength of God. How do you feel? You know what? I dare say most of the Lord's believers today feel poorly. Are you strong in the things of God? You know what? Only you really can answer that. And if you're not, only you can fix it. Right? Yeah. We have to be, we have to be, remember we've already read that in that day, only the strong are going to be worshiping him. Only the ones that are at the top will be able to give him praise. For thou has been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm. Now, uh, do you take refuge? I think the Bible is here is okay. We can do that. But down in the cellar, you praise him anyway. But you know, as I said, there's some really dumb people in the modern day. And instead of fleeing from the storm, they run to it. I don't think storm chasers are that smart of people. I believe they're missing their aces and their kings. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to run toward a tornado. You know, a lot of times I think this is the thing with people like that. They've never really seen the destruction. And if they've seen it, they certainly haven't experienced it. When your house is left to heap, listen, you won't run to them no more. Right? And so we find we do when the storm is coming. The Bible says here we have refuge. We have a place to go. In other words, a thing, a place, a refuge stronger than the storm. Ever, yeah, Hurricane Katrina was a Category 5 uh, hurricane. I think for that, the sustained winds are right at 200 miles per hour. I can't imagine, I can't imagine the destruction. I had a, a friend that went down there. She was a CNA. Uh, her and my mom and her mom were really good friends. You know what? Christy went crazy almost after that. She went down there to take care of people in nursing homes after that destruction. She would never be the same again. It's hard to watch, ain't it? You know, that would make me flee to a shelter. Flee to a place where I'm going to be safe. But we find in the modern day that is, that is not the average person. So despite of the sin storm that is around us in 2023, there's a refuge you can run to. There's a place that's safe. There, there, there's, a, there's a place to hide, and that is in the person of Christ. Guys, it's getting dark, y'all. Mm -hmm. When we have the very top leader of our nation saying, Israel, you need to get out of Gaza. Take notice. Mm -hmm. The sky getting dark. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what the thing with the Gaza Strip? It belongs to Israel. They don't need to get out of there. It's theirs. That'd be like me and uh, somebody come and tell me and Donna to get off of 201 to back for it. I'm not going to do it because it's mine. We need to watch our nation. We need, well, you know what? Uh, I think it was Saturday, yesterday. Impeachment charges are coming against our president. You know what I say? Good. Good. It's needed to happen for a long time. The storm's coming. We are the strongest military nation on earth. The storm's coming. We, we, need, to be, we need to be very cautious. We need to be very attentive. And as we think, you know, uh, uh, I have another friend at work, and, and she told me this. 
that she was driving along and her and her sister went to get her nails done. And after that, they were going to go do something with their hair. And I'm assuming to get it colored because her roots are a little gray. And I, I mean, she didn't tell me that, but I'm just guessing. And, uh, and uh, she said suddenly, she knew she ought to do it. And she told her, she told her sister, we're going back to my house. Now, this is the goodness of God. It's in South Montgomery County, as far as you could get from the store. Pretty good, ain't it? He delivered them. There, you know where their beauty shop was? On exit one. God's good, ain't he? And, 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 and so we see as as we see the storm approaching, we need to be closer and closer and closer to the Lord. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. Now, you remember Jonah. What happened to him? He preached his message. He didn't care if it was effectual or not. In fact, he went back out on the hill and was waiting for destruction to come. And you know what? I think he was going to do jumping jacks when it happened. Very much out of God's will. But remember what sprouted up? Because it was hot up there. A line uh, popped up and he got a little shade. That was a shelter, wasn't it? Now, when we think of shelters, we think of what I've been preaching on, black clouds. But you know what? Shelter can be, I mean, storms can be heat, devastating droughts. You know, right now in southern Tennessee, below Franklin, there is so little rain, they got almost no tobacco in. You know what? You know how far that is from us? About 70 miles. And here we are with all the rain we could use. The rain in Donna's new car last night. <laughs> I left the door open. I guess it was me. But you know what? We had rain, didn't we? Mm -hmm. You know what? I'd be willing to bet Franklin didn't get none. Mm -hmm. So the, the most minuscule provision he ought to be praised for. He ought to be lifted up for. That's why many times we're no happier than what we are. It's because we miss the blessings that he has given us, the shelter in the time of storm. When the blast of the terrible ones. Now the blast is the beginning of the storm. I want you to see it's not attributed to weather, it's attributed to people. The blast of the terrible ones. Now, when I was a kid, and I've told you, I'm with Andersons, hadn't heard it, I, I saw two tornadoes, and that did me for the rest of my life. Um, but Mama was babysitting a child, and we, I, I was to take a different bus with that little child home from school, and again, the wisdom of Stewart County Public Schools, there were tornadoes coming, and they let us out of the school and sent us home. Mm -hmm. And so we got to Carlisle, and I looked back toward Carl uh, Dover, which is north this way of Carlisle, and I saw the phone clown drop out. And I grabbed Christy, and we ran to the house, and I was so tore up I couldn't even say anything. I was just pushing people to the center of the house because it didn't have a basement. It, it was just a little old 60s house. And the house began to do like this right here. And the storm, see, the storm was coming. The terrible storm was coming. And something had to be done. And we got in there, and you know what? Everything was fine. Mr. Terry Barrett, he later became a postman. Uh, he told me, he said, Larry, right at the end, I had the bus to the floor, meaning the accelerator. The bus wasn't even moving. Just right up, Miss Gladys Anderson's barn was gone. 
it was a hay barn. We had the little hay fold out from it. And it wadded up that tin so bad, if you could have been strong enough, you could have picked up a piece of tin and held it like that. See, the storm was devastating. You know what? My God kept me safe. God protected me. God, God, God kept me uh, from being killed in the storm. And so we find here that one of the purposes of the storms is to praise the Lord. The terrible ones, the terrific ones, the strong ones. Verse 5, Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all the people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves, of, of fat things full of marrow, and of wine, of wines on leaves well refined. Now, after the storm, <coughs> after the storm, he promises a feast. Church, the storm's coming. But just remember, after the storm is a feast. That's going to be good, isn't it? That's going to be a wonderful time. That's going to be when we're with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you talk about the storm breaking loose here, it's going to break loose. When God's people, that he, all, all that, here for this, all that's going to be left is people he has no commitment to protect. <clears throat> and what will they do then? They won't flee to Christ. That's a fallacy. That's left behind junk. You know what? They'll cry out and cuss God. Yeah. And their only response to the storm is going, Rock, please follow me. What happens when a big boulder falls on you? You die. <laughs> right? They'd rather die than face God. But you know what? What they don't realize, and I truly believe they don't realize it, when they die, they face God anyway. The storm's coming. Are you ready for 